so beautiful. Good morning, everybody. Amazingly beautiful. So I hope you all had a good Palm Sunday yesterday, or maybe you're still in the west coast of the Americas and it's still Palm Sunday. Six o'clock here, almost two minutes to six. So it's, uh, well, I think you changed clocks already in the States, right? We're gonna change clocks this Thursday, uh, Holy Thursday night going into Good Friday and Good Friday morning early, I think, to change the clocks around two o'clock in the morning. So maybe you did that already in the States. And if you did, we're only six hours apart on the East Coast. Children were having their games, obviously, yesterday. We had people from the States and Canada filming here on Saturday also. I didn't tell you that yesterday. And we also had uh, the women's conference, which was very blessed and quite a nice participation, wonderful talks and awesome music. And then we had visitors yesterday from a number of countries. I didn't deal with them too much because it was Sunday and we were out quite a bit of the day. There were some people even here from Costa Rica. Obviously, a lot of more people would like to be a lot more people would like to be here for these holidays. Just the way the light is hitting here now, there's a nice effect on the green. So we're into Holy Week, Monday of Holy Week. And therefore the readings continue apace with the closing in on Good Friday. And there's a very special image that got me thinking a lot yesterday and today, also because of a couple of things that I read. One thing I heard from Bishop Barron for his talk for this past Sunday. It's always very rich as usual. Word on fire, if you want to Google it, Bishop Barron, both ways you can find it. He gives a marvelous commentary for every Sunday. And I must give you the name of the book that I just got. A wonderful, wonderful Protestant friends brought it to me from the US. And it's a, a whole reread of the entire Bible. And the book I have is part one for the Old Testament. And it's amazing, amazing commentary. Uh, I, I get you the right name because I don't want to mess it up. Uh, you just have to remind me if I forget. And then I should put it in maybe into the notes so you can find it easily. It's a, it's a great read. It's academically quite challenging and stimulating. And it opens up you know, interesting perspectives. It's a great combination of the rational study through all the gains of literary science and biblical studies, exegesis, and it's very rich in 
in faith in because at the end of the day we can study the bible as much as we want with scientific tools literary tools that have been developed for all the ancient languages and literatures of the world but uh, at the end of the day it's god speaking to us and that also needs incredible respect and objectivity so the human element is totally present and that's why it's in that sense a lot of analysis is possible a lot of connections can be made but the chief author the main author is god and that's why the scripture texts are so powerful for us so that draws in so powerfully and then another text was from uh, an italian writer a confrere shared yesterday and it prompted further thoughts about the woman her name is mary and she's not Mary Magdalene, or maybe, well, I mean, there's a huge debate about that, but anyway. And she's not Mary, the mother of Jesus. She's Mary, for sure, she's the sister of Martha and Lazarus. Sometimes people conflated the Marys. And this woman, uh, at this meal, short days, six days before Jesus' passion, she acquires a jar of very expensive nard perfumed nard spike and nard and she uh, um, anoints jesus feet with this uh, precious ointment and then there's critique why she wasted all this money on Jesus, more than a year's salary. And she said that her action would be remembered forever when the gospel is told, which we're actually doing right now as we talk about it. It will be remembered forever. So what's going on here? Who broke the jar and poured out the the precious contents and uh, another thought came to me this morning that actually there are two jars poured out and obviously the one that the woman does I was going to go try and go through there but I'm going to go back and reverse my tracks so who poured out the who, which precious jar was poured out Maybe we want to look at, at both readings just to, to come together with this thought. So if we looked at the first reading from Isaiah. Oh, that was interesting. We had reeds here. And look what we have in the Isaiah reading. A bruised reed he shall not break. So there's a broken reed, right? or bruised reed and you can find them bending down and when we see things a little bit broken we have an instinct in us to smash them it's a human thing all this water in here so I have to cross over I want to cross over to the embankment there here's my servant whom I uphold my chosen one with whom I am pleased upon whom I have put my spirit he shall bring forth justice to the nations how much that is needed today 
that all the peoples of the earth experience true justice. Not crying out nor shouting nor making his voice heard. A bruised reed he shall not break. So it's very humble, uh, meek person, gentle, modest. A smoldering wick he will not quench until he establishes justice on the earth. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. It's great when brothers help each other at fishing, when father helps his son. Beautiful. The Lord is my light and my salvation. With the greatest bowl of precious ointment that smashed and poured out, it's actually the Word made flesh on Calvary. And his heart is even pierced at the end, so the last drop of blood and water pour out. The Lord, God loved the world so much he gave his only son, his most precious. And we had that reading yesterday that he did not hold divinity, grasp it tight. He emptied himself and became like a slave and one of us even to death, death on a cross. That's where really the most precious nard is poured out. The, the greatest treasure. And so what the woman is doing is she's responding. She has recognized the love. The question would be, why did she pour out the nard? Because she has had such an expression of an experience of love, of being loved, of being redeemed. And she can't keep it for herself. She has to say thank you. She has to pour out her heart. God deserves the most precious of our heart and soul. And we can go back to that first great commandment to love God with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind. And then we can also pour out that love on our neighbor as ourself. Nowadays, maybe we have a psychology that we pour a lot of nerd on ourselves, very self-centered, maybe because we're very wounded and we need a healing in order to be able to love again. To love God with all our heart and all our soul and all our strength. And so there's the, the, the precious gift that God has given us is the foundation of all the, the response. So this gesture of this woman is a very powerful image of our heart's response for the gift of mercy and salvation that we receive.
And how do we pour out nard on God today? Maybe one of the most precious realities we have is time. And we're so busy doing many things and we don't have time to stop and pray. To gaze upon God, to, to rest for our soul, to, to breathe. This precious time of morning when we wake up. To give the first moments to the Lord. I thank you, Lord, that I am. I thank you for the gift of life you have given me. I dedicate my heart to you. Or give me the strength to dedicate my heart to you. God bless you. See you later, alligators.